Well, thank you for agreeing to meet with me today. It's a real pleasure, real honor to meet you. Um, I guess I would like to start um, this interview um, basically talking about the economic crisis and um, how we as as workers and as lobbies um, can deal with this with the issues um, which we face. Um, I uh, recently read your piece, Crisis and Hope, um, which was published in the Boston Review, and. Um, in that piece, uh, you stated that the financial crisis will presumably be patched up somehow while leaving the institutions that created the pretty much in place. Um, while thinking about this, um, I came to understand that working people in the US and North America and in Europe basically are not, um, are not really being helped by the bailout um, so much. Um, I mean, they're being helped by the stimulus, but the stimulus and the bailout are two different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not enough by this. The stimulus is much too small. Uh, it should be much larger. Mm -hmm. That's why they're, you know, 10 million unemployed. But uh, right. the, the, you know, the policies are not made to reduce unemployment. They're made to help banks. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Right. Um, and following on that, um, there has been a recent um, upsurge of, I would say, a militant um, industrial action um, in workplaces, primarily throughout Europe, also North America. Um, a few in North America. A few yeah. in North America. Um, as you know, the Republic Windows and Doors factory in Chicago, right. that, was, that was the first factory occupation, I believe, since the 1930s in the US. Maybe. Um, no, not quite, because the Youngstown Steel that was an occupation in 1979, I think. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's, I think I mentioned that in the article. It's a, mm -hmm. a model that really should be pursued now. They went on from to try to uh, have the workforce and the community take over the, fa the abandoned factories that U.S. Steel was dismantling. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, th that effort was led pretty much, the legal effort that followed was led by Stoughton Lind, mm -hmm. a radical labor lawyer, and I went at the courts and they were, they didn't win in the courts, but they could have won. And if they could have won, it would have been with enough support, which they didn't have. Uh, it, it could have meant a lot. And in fact, the same thing could be done right now. Uh, at Republic Windows, the corporation saw what was coming and sold it off, which is pretty normal. But uh, uh, it ought to be done right now in the in the auto industry, for example. There's just no reason why, uh, I mean, you know, other than weakness uh, and lack of kind of a conception of how to proceed. Mm -hmm. There's no other reason why the workforce and the communities in, say, Detroit and Flint and so on can't take over these. Uh, uh, installations that General Motors is dismantling, uh, selling off, and uh, convert them. Uh, it take some assistance, but nothing like what the, the bailout of the banks. Uh, convert them to, say, producing um, high-speed rail. Uh, instead, what's happening, I may have mentioned that in the article, I don't recall, is that the Obama administration is uh, using federal stimulus money to try to get Spain and France to produce high-speed rail for the United States, which badly needs it, but not the installations that are being dismantled. Uh, presumably those policies are more profitable for the banks and the other financial institutions. But that's a perfect opportunity for the uh, workforce and the communities to simply proceed to uh, do what they were trying to do in Youngstown uh, and a little bit in Republic and that is take over the factories, put them under worker self-management, uh, produce what the country needs, uh, badly needs, like high-speed rail, for example, or green technology, and so on. Um, I feel that um, a lot of these, um, these occupations and a lot of um, what workers are doing are a sort of an immediate response to the mass layoffs and, and right. to the um, decreased wages and hours, um, but um, I feel that a lot of what, what they're doing are, are they're sort of aiming for these uh, 
these parochial gains without thinking more long term in terms of um, how they can work move towards worker self management. Yeah, that's what the IWW should be doing, mm -hmm. providing that spark. You're right, it's reactive. But the same was true of the sit down strikes in the thirties. I mean, the reason the sit-down strikes struck such fear in the hearts of management was that they know that a sit-down strike is just one step short of taking over the factory and running it, and that's the end. You know.